Greetings, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Talk of the Town. I'm James Milan, and this is a legislative update with our state senator, Cindy Friedman. Always, as everybody knows, one of my favorite uh, Talk of the Town episodes that appears regularly throughout the year. Cindy, thank you for being here. Hi, James. How are you? Good. We made you wait a while as we were setting okay. up, and, and uh, we do appreciate your patience, but it's always worth no talking worries. to you. Um, you have your list of stuff there, and I have my list of stuff here, and we're just going to reconcile them. Um, Sounds good. Let's, let's start by um, the fact that we are at the moment in early February, and so just situate us in the legislative process sure. um, at, in the State House, and then we can start talking about more specific legislation that okay. might be pertinent for sure. our viewers. We are at the beginning of a session, so the sessions are two years. Um, and uh, bills get filed during a session, and when the session's over, all those bills disappear. Is that right? Just yeah. start all over again? Start all over again. So uh, we um, are in the beginning of the process. Uh, bills have been filed. Uh, bills, there have been about 6,000 bills that have been filed. Uh, the deadline was January 21st, I believe. Now, what that means is that any bill that comes in afterwards would be, is considered a late file. Um, so it goes to the bottom so of the list So it sort of or goes well, and then it has to be, um, it's got to be accepted in, it has to figure out where it's going to go, what committees. Um, but right now, the clerks of both the Senate and the House have all the bills that have been filed, and um, they are putting them into packages, and they're sending them off to committees, which will happen... Um, once the committees are formed. Mm. So <clears throat> the other um, activity that happens is the Senate do, do their rules for the session, the House does their rules for the session, and then they each do um, their version of the joint rules. Mm -hmm. So how do the Senate and, and House talk to each other? Um, the, the House did theirs. The Senate is doing uh, theirs this week. Um, and then there'll be a conference committee mm -hmm. to reconcile the joint. And um, they might report some of them out and hold some of them back. But once those rules are voted on, um, they will, then the clerks will start the process of sending um, bills to committees. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would expect that committee chairs will be um, appointed in the next two to three weeks. So I don't want to create too much of a digression here, but a couple of things that you sure. said uh, I just want to follow up on. Um, one is that the idea that these rules, as you just said, are, you know, also have to be done at the beginning of every session, right? How, how much do those change session to session? I would assume that, you know, the majority of the rules are just like carry over. I mean, not literally because you're starting anew, but... Uh, they're basically the same framework and sure they're similar but um uh, here's an example uh committees change so committee names change so there may be for instance a certain set of senate committees that um are no longer relevant so for instance we had a committee called covid 19 and emergency preparedness well we don't really we're not really going to focus on COVID-19, so we're going to, the committee will we're probably be called. We're all done with COVID-19. Yeah, well, <laughs> we just put it under emergency preparedness. Right, of course. Um, and so, so there's changes like that. Um, another uh, change is we had Senate rules around remote participation and remote um, uh, voting that were put in because of the emergency. Mm -hmm. Well, now we have to, we're going to fix our rules, except some of those uh, reject others of them. So there's always tweaking that mm -hmm. uh, that happens within the body. Um, and then you have the joint rules, which th there's there can be more um, differences in those. So mm -hmm. for instance, we Senate will probably vote to have all of their committee votes um, publicized. The House does oh, not want to do that, right? So that's a difference in the joint rules. Um, uh, the Senate may say, we want all our bills to come back to the Senate. We want all the House bills to come back to the House. 
the House may Maybe. not agree with that. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. so those things are the things that have to be reconciled. Yeah, that's that's that really yeah. that's. But you're right. The fundamentals well. don't change. Right. There must be a corpus right. of kind of evergreen stuff Absolutely. comes up every yeah. session. We right. we don't have to go right. over that again. No. Et cetera. No. Um, and then my, my second thing was you had mentioned that everything's a blank slate as you start the new session. Now, all those old bills that didn't pass disappeared. How does that really, so how does that work? So you, for instance, we've talked about this in previous updates. It's a yeah. fact of life for all of you that you work hard on stuff and then it doesn't get passed. Are you starting from square one again, truly, with that legislation in the next session if you try and bring it up again? Or sure. do you... Is, do you, is there any advantage to that legislation conferred by the fact that you've gotten a certain, you know, made it a certain way? So yes and no. So I have filed about 40 bills. That's okay. It's, it's average. Some of those bills are refiles. All we've done is gone back and changed the, the dates the date. from, you know, 2020 to 2022. Um, and those were, we will refile. Mm -hmm. Um, but, or and, the process starts from scratch. So I may have a bill that has gotten through the committees mm -hmm. and is sitting in Ways and Means, and the session ends, I start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. The bill gets filed, gets reported to a committee, there has to be a hearing, hearing uh, is, is scheduled, hearing occurs, then the committee has to decide whether to report it out favorably, goes to the next step. So anywhere it was in that process, it starts so, over. Right. Yeah. Which, you know, an, another theme of our conversations over the years have been the various frustrations that are kind yeah. of attendant to just being a politician in this state and in most states, I guess. Um, but that sounds to me like that could be it. That, that's frustrating. I mean, you have to have a... Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's very frustrating. I would say it's very frustrating for me around our pharma, our pharmaceutical mm -hmm, bill, which mm -hmm. is now the third time we filed mm -hmm. it. Um, it's very frustrating that we're, we're not getting agreement um, on that from the House. And then there's other bills that are filed because they need to be out there and talked about they're big or they're a really brand new idea. And so sometimes having those couple mm -hmm. sessions really helps to refine the bill. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We're doing a primary care bill. We did it last session. It wasn't really ready for prime time last session, but the, the process that we went through, the discussions that we have really helped to solidify that bill. So now it's been refiled. It's had a lot of changes made to it. But it's much, it, it, it's much more um, solid, is the mm -hmm. word I can think of. And we've had a lot of discussions. So it's in people's consciousness. Mm -hmm. It starts to get into people's consciousness. So um, it's very frustrating. And it's also, in a way, really important because so many of these bills need, we need attention and they make a difference. And so you can't just rush things through, mm -hmm. um, even though you know you should rush them through. <laughs> but there is, it's meant to be deliberative. Right. It's, it's set up that way. So, and right. I, I both understand it and find it frustrating. Yeah, like our federal process, yeah. and our, the, the structure of our federal government really was set right from the beginning to be slow. Right, exactly. Very methodical and very, you know, right. resistant to change in a right. lot of ways. Right. But seemingly that makes for a more stable yeah. overall situation. Um, yeah, and I like the idea, thanks for explaining it just now, because I like the idea that though you have to begin the process again at square one, you have all of that accumulated right. yeah. knowledge and that communication and that deliberation and that, you know, right. hashing out of things that you can bring right into right. it. Right. in the new iteration, I assume. Yeah. Um, so let's let's talk a little bit about the actual, so we've been talking about the process and about bills in the abstract, but let's talk um, more specifically. And, you know, I have my list here of things that I talk to you about each time because they're so important to you. Um, that includes health care, both kind of physical and, 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 and mental health care, uh, housing, child care, family assistance, education, all these things that, you know, I know you're working yeah. hard at. So 
in whatever order you'd like. Uh, you know, just take take us through some of the things that are really, you know, that are front and center for you at the right. moment. So, as you said, my my big focus is health care. I mean, it's been what I've been doing in some form or the other since I've become a senator. And we are really looking at a couple things. One is is, is pharmaceutical and the cost of, of, of uh, prescription drugs. We're looking at the, prima, uh, the uh, pharmacy benefit managers, who are the middleman between the pharmacy companies and the insurers. And why you care about this is because they're the people that decide what drugs you have access to if you're a member of, a, of an insurance group and what you're not. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's a real muddy, murky, opaque, yucky space. And we really need to, to, to fix that. Um, we have a huge healthcare crisis right now, um, especially around workforce and the lack of workforce. And that, there are many reasons for that. So we have some bills that we're, are going to address workforce, getting more people into the healthcare economy. Um, and making it easier for them to do their jobs. So there's a, a couple bills, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really focused on that. Um, we have um, a bill that is looking at private equity and how that's changing the face of healthcare. Mm. And why you care about that is because private equity is a very short-term game, mm -hmm. um, and healthcare can't be short-term. So it's really changing the way we. Um, we do business and we deliver health care. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of bills from the past that I really um, am excited and interested about and think we might have a chance is we have a, um, a benefits for violent crime bill for uh, police officers who have been um, attacked or harmed in the act of doing their job because of a violent crime. Mm -hmm. um, right now, it's kind of up to the town to decide whether what kind of long-term disabilities a, a police officer gets. And we want to make sure that it's the same it's across awesome. the board mm -hmm. and that police officers get the maximum of the benefit. Um, and these are for people who've been harmed and can't do their jobs anymore. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that that's one. And then um, we have a medically fragile children bill. So there's there the, the state supports Families whose children are uh, what we would call medically fragile, they have very significant, complex um, physical health needs. Mm -hmm. We provide service to keep them at home. That has been woefully underfunded. Mm -hmm. um, these are kids that need full-time uh, skilled care. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to keep pushing to bring up those, um, those rates so people get the, um, the care they need. Um, there was another one, and it just went out of my head. Yeah, well, um, I'm just going to interject here for a second and, and say that oh, one saying. of the things that you were talking about really was reflected in, in something that I was reading on your website, um, this, I, this idea of this crisis, and it is a crisis in terms of just, you know, having enough people to provide the services and the care. Um, and I know that you were, were happy to announce that there uh, legislation that came through that would uh, ensure that Massachusetts doesn't penalize people oh. who uh, fall behind on their debt, you know, student loans and other things like that in a way that, that uh, does, wouldn't allow them to get certification, oh, keep, yes, keep yes, doing yes, their, yes, yes. their the these important can't be jobs, part of, right, et cetera. Right, right. And I was like, okay, that's another, uh, again, it, it shows how many different facets oh, there are <laughs> to, you know, trying to do something as broad as what you're saying. My health care is my, my thing, right. you say. And that just, the way that that gets refracted is in t thousands of thousands little, of little ways in which, it, you know, it, yeah. the, the thing I just said was said yeah. poorly, but nonetheless Absolutely. said it was an example yeah. of that. No, it, it is a deeply complex and deeply broken system. Mm -hmm. And, um, when you, if there were, there's not a magic wand, right? You can't just go, I'll fix this and then everything will fall into place. Every piece of it, every stakeholder, if you think of it as an onion, it's many layers and you got to keep peeling that <laughs> onion and, you know, and you say, oh, this is what the insurers 
are responsible. This is what for the hospitals are responsible for. This is what the doctors, this is what pharma and PBMs and mm. imaging and and nonprofit and profit and, you know, et, et cetera, et cetera, et right. cetera. So it's a very, very complicated. Yeah. And I, you know, I think you can say that to us. And of course, we're, you know, we think, yeah, I guess it is complicated. But I, I really like the fact that talking to you, you have the, you have the, the anecdotes, the illustration, you know, just, just you, the concrete examples to say, when I say complicated, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's an important thing, I think, for people to understand, especially because it taxes your patients as a legislator just to do the work that, you, you know, the most important stuff to you, yeah. you still have to follow the whole same process. Well, it's also taxing all of our patients, oh, right? Yeah. That we're like, yeah. Why can't these people? Right, right. I want access. I want to get to done. my doctor or my provider when I need to. My my um, uh, my cost can't keep going up. I can't afford it, um, and I can't work through the maze of all of the forms and procedures and stuff I have to do just to get my care. Mm -hmm. So, help me. I want I want it to be affordable. I want it to be accessible. And I want it to be good quality. Right. And I want to be able to afford it. And, and that's, that's only reasonable, that right? That is only I mean, reasonable. And, right. and even if people aren't right. only thinking about themselves or thinking about themselves even primarily, but just instead kind of looking yeah. and saying, you're right, man, this system really is broken. Yeah. We really, so, what can we do about it? Right. Well, we need you got, you know, yeah. we need the yeah. legislators to do something. And again, I think these conversations, I hope for the folks who are tuning in, will clarify and illuminate to some degree yeah. what you're up against and why it's take why these things take so long. Right. right. Um, but anyway. Well, thanks. Bit of a digression <laughs> there. Um, other things that you do, do, that you do want to highlight, though, for us? And um, I, I want to highlight that um, we will be looking really carefully at um, bills that address the housing crisis. Um, I don't have I mean, I have a few small pieces in that, but it's something that when you start to look at health care, you, you know, what do people need? They need a roof over their head, they need food on their table, and they need access to health care. Um, and really close behind that is education. But if you don't have a roof over your head, it's really hard to have um, food and it's really, really hard to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. And so we have to have a real concerted effort to not only end ho homelessness, but also to have a, a, a state that's affordable for people. I mean, we know, we know people who are making $200,000 a year together, and they can't live in Arlington. You can't buy a house in Arlington mm -hmm. if that's what you make, mm -hmm. and that just, speaks very, very poorly for how we keep maintain our state, how we maintain our standards of living, how do we get mm -hmm. people to come here, how do we get people to stay here. We need all of these people. And a lot of people are leaving because they can't afford it. They mm -hmm. just can't afford it. And um, certainly I moved here in 1978 and I could never afford my house today if I had to buy it. Um, you could have moved here 20 years after that, 30 years yeah. after that even, and still not yeah. be able yeah. to afford and it And so, now. you know, that's, we've got to take, you know, it's so, we are so dependent, our economy is so dependent on bringing workers and keeping workers. So we'll be uh, lending all of our support to how do we increase um, housing. Mm -hmm. um, it's also affects, you know, uh, wages, right? We either have to make housing affordable or continue to increase, increase, increase wages so people can afford it. So, right. You know, and that's going to be really hard to do, especially in a recession. Yeah. And these things, as you said, um, you know, the time frame for all this stuff is just it doesn't go in two year no, increments no. like the legislation does. So, yeah. again, we are talking at the very beginning of a session now. So we're only talking about the, the things that matter to you, the things you plan to be working on uh, right. over the course of the session in future updates over the next year and two years. Yeah. You know, we'll be able to chart your progress and chart the progress of those bills, et cetera. 
Um, but I, I do think it's, again, important to remind people what these, what the things are uh, that you, you know, that you are working the hardest right. um, yeah. to make happen. Um, I don't want to leave anything on the table. I have a couple of other questions that don't have to do with specific legislation, so I want to give you one last shot at, you know, well, one of the really good things about technology is if you go onto my website, you will see all of the bills and you will see um, explanations for what you, each one is, what they do. Mm -hmm. and, um, you mean what like the, the 40 bills is. a year? The 40 bills mm -hmm. are up there mm -hmm. um, and they're broken out by um, subject. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm happy to talk to anybody who wants to know more. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, But that's that's a great place to go. I have an amazing staff that keeps that up to date so and i know from talking to you in you know formally and informally that you really love sinking your teeth into yeah. this stuff both explaining it to folks if they have questions but also just kind of figuring out how to make a workable solution or policy around right. these these issues so uh, i'm sure you're going to be spending plenty of time oh, yeah. in the trenches yeah. um, in these coming months and years um, and, uh, you know, I hope you had a good Christmas and New Year's break so that you've got, you know, you're refreshed and ready to, to tackle these things anew. Let me, um, a, you know, ask you something slightly, certainly related, but, but, but off the, the immediate topic, and that is uh, historic election um, back in November. Really great stuff in a lot of ways. Lots of stuff for us to, as Massachusetts residents and voters, to say, all right. Um, including our first female governor, um, you know, voted in as such, and our attorney general, you know, on on and on. Um, so what do you think? What do you think of that? What do you think of the prospect of working with Governor Maura Healey? Um, because I think a lot, of, and, and, and I'd ask you to address specifically the idea that maybe a lot of people would hold that, oh, wow, now there's a Democrat in the governor's mansion as well, as the, the legislature as usual having its lopsided democratic majorities, either lots is gonna happen or these guys are gonna get along great, et cetera. I know that that's not how it necessarily <laughs> works, right? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, let me ask you. Well, first of all, I'm ex incredibly excited and very, um, you know, I love you guys, but it's really nice for, for me to, <laughs> at this point in my life, look at a stage and see our governor, our lieutenant governor, and our attorney general, um, all women, and, and especially a, a woman of color in the attorney general's office. So it's very, very exciting for me. Um, can, can I just say one thing? As a guy, it's really <laughs> exciting for me, too. <laughs> good, go ahead. Good, good, good. Um, the Democratic Party is a very, very large tent. And there are people in this state that are Democrats, true Democrats, who would be Republicans in other states. Um, it's a very large tent. And so while people, you know, look at it and say, oh, it's all going to be easy sailing, it's never been easy sailing in the legislature. As you know, we, the, the House and the Senate are very different. Um, we have a range of people in each of those parties, you know, in each in the House and that are go from very, very ultra left to very, very conservative. Mm -hmm. So that's not changing because we have a Democrat in, in, the, in mm -hmm. office, right? We don't know where Mara stands on a lot of things because she's never had to talk about it and mm -hmm. she's been the attorney general. We know she has a focus on certain things, but she certainly doesn't have it on everything and it's a brand new job and it's really different. So I think it's gonna be good and I'm excited about it. But I don't expect that everything's going to happen like that, because you still need the House. Even if it did, even if she agreed with everything I believe in, <laughs> you've got the House and you've got the Senate. And that's where things get done. Mm -hmm. That's where policy gets uh, really gets made and really gets laid on the table. Mm -hmm. So um, I have great expectations, but again, no guarantees at all. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm sure there are things we disagree on. <laughs> and... I have to say that uh, it's hard for me to ever let you go without also um, kind of asking you to comment on things that are beyond your expertise, per perhaps, but you're a knowledgeable 
uh, you know, an articulate person to ask, you know, things that are happening right now by, with the Biden administration at the federal level with the new House uh, majority as barely majority as, as we've seen. Um, just get, share your thoughts on, on what's going on on the federal level here and what, what you see happening over these next couple of years. I think it's going to be a slog. I think it's going to be a big, a major slog because we really are, you know, I think we talked about this before. Thoughtful, well-researched um, uh, people who do their work, who really care about an issue, um, are really important. And we can all, I sit down with people across from me who are really, really smart, thoughtful healthcare experts, and we don't agree. I, but I have absolute respect for them because what they want to do is solve a problem that I want to solve, mm -hmm. right? And so we'll figure it out. But when people come in who either it's all about their personal agenda or it's all about destroying something, that's when I get really upset. And I think that there just are a lot of people out there right now who really aren't interested in, in solving the problems. They're really interested in destroying the system. And mm -hmm. that is should be frightening for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, I will just point out one, one piece of this. Part of our healthcare problem is immigration. We have virtually stopped immigrating people into this country. We have never done that. We are a country of immigrants. They are the people right now who take care of your mother. Mm -hmm. They are the people that help our kids get food in schools. Um, they are the people that do the jobs that keep our cities clean and safe. And, you know, they start um, doing basic work and then they work themselves up. And that's how it's been in this country. And it's just virtually stopped in the past eight years or whatever. And mm -hmm. we are suffering mightily for it. Um, we need people to come into this country and help us fill our jobs. And it's not just health care. It's in every sector. Mm -hmm. And, and yet we can't have a real honest discussion about immigration without labeling everybody bad or everybody good or, you know, and we're, we're, we're in deep trouble, James, if we don't fix that problem. And we are certainly in deep trouble through health care. Yeah. Um, and on that issue of immigration slash health care, because as you said, there is a strong, strong connection between those two. It's a spotty record for the Biden administration as yep, well yep. so far. So hard right. to... And hard Congress to... won't deal with it. And, mm -hmm. and we have people coming into this country that have such incredible skills and we won't even acknowledge them. Mm -hmm. At our... It's our loss. Yes, at our, at our cost. Yes, at our cost, absolutely. Yeah. Sure. All right, well, on such a cheery note... Cheery note, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to thank you, um, as always. I know you have got something to get to from here. It's been a long day already. You made the time. We really appreciate yeah. it. Uh, one thing I want to say is that mm -hmm. we are continuing to have virtual... Good. Um, uh, um, office hours. Office hours. And if you go to my website, cindyfriedman.org, you can... There'll be a thing to sign up for office hours if you're interested. So we're always happy to have people sign up. And um, everybody knows where to find us. Well, everybody can tell I have a good time talking to this woman. I'm sure <laughs> that you will as well. Um, and I get answers, and you will too. Um, she is Cindy Friedman. She is our state senator. We really appreciate her taking the time to be here. We also appreciate your taking the time. I'm James Milan. This is Talk of the Town, a legislative update with our state senator, Cindy Friedman. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.